Hi, good evening. I am Palm Praise 2, and I like to welcome you to an evening edition read here on Palm Praise 2. Certainly, peace and blessings be upon you and your family this evening. For this evening, we are going to go ahead and get into Lies My Teacher Told Me by James Lowen. We are currently on chapter number five, Gone with the Wind. And for this evening's take that I have for you. We are on take 11. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this take that I have for you. It reads as such. While textbooks do not treat Stephen Douglas as a major hero like Christopher Columbus or Woodrow Wilson. They do discuss him with sympathy. In 1858, Douglas ran for re-election against Abraham Lincoln in a contest that presaged the ideologies that would dominate the two major parties for the next three decades. Accordingly, textbooks give the debates an extraordinary amount of space, an average of seven paragraphs and two pictures. Authors of my earlier sample of textbooks use this space as if they were writing for GQ. American history gave the debates 16 paragraphs. Here are two of them. Even without his tall stove pipe hat, the six feet six inch, in parentheses, the author has added two inches. Lincoln towered over the little giant. He wore a formal black suit, usually rumpled and always too short for his long arms and legs. Douglas was what we would call a flashy dresser. He wore shirts with ruffles, fancy embroidered vest, a broad felt hat. He had a rapid fire way of speaking that contrasted with Lincoln's slow, deliberate style. Lincoln's voice was high-pitched, Douglas deep. Both had to have powerful lungs to make themselves heard over street noise and the bustle of the crowds. They had no public address system to help them. So we learned that Douglas was a flashy dresser and spoke powerfully. But where are his ideas? Hmm. What did he say? Hmm. All 12 textbooks in my original sample provided just three sentence fragments from Douglas himself. Here is every word of his they provided. Forever divided into free and slave states, as our fathers made it. Thinks the Negro is his brother, and 
for a day or an hour. Just 24 words and 12 books while celebrating the little giant for his powerful speech or splendid oratory. Nine textbooks silence him completely. Two of the six textbooks supply at least a longer sentence fragment by Douglas. Slavery cannot exist a day or an hour anywhere unless it is supported by local police regulations. Douglas' so-called Freeport Doctrine. Holt American Nation provides a longer quotation. While Pathways to the Present doesn't quote a word, it does summarize. Douglas supported popular sovereignty on issues including slavery. Thus, four recent textbooks do tell that the debates had something to do with slavery. They need to go further. Douglas' position was not so vague. The debates were largely about race and the position African Americans should eventually hold in our society. This is why Paul Engel chose the title, Created Equal, for his centennial edition of the debates on July 9, 1858, in Chicago. Douglas made his position clear, as he did repeatedly throughout that summer. In my opinion, this government of ours is founded on the white basis. It was made by the white man for the benefit of the white man to be administered by white men. I am opposed to taking any step that recognizes the Negro man or the Indian man as the equal of the white man. I am opposed to give me, giving him a voice in the administration of the government. I would extend to the Negro and the Indian, and to all dependent races, every right, every privilege, and every immunity consistent with the safety and welfare of the white races. But equality, they never should have. Ain't that about it? Okay. Let me get back to the book, y'all. Either political or social or in any other respect, whatever. My friends, you see that the issue are distinctly drawn. Let me repeat that last line. My friends, you see that the issues are distinctly drawn. You see the picture? Did you paint a picture while I was reading it to you? Textbooks readers cannot see the <laughs> issues, plural, are distinctly drawn. However, because even the newest textbooks give no hint of Douglas racism, only one book among all 18 American history quotes Douglas on race. Lincoln thinks the Negro is his brother. 
the little giant sneered. These six words in one book. Now out of print. Hmm. Among 18 textbooks. Hardly do justice to Douglas on race. Why do textbooks censor Douglas? Hmm. Since they devote paragraphs to his wardrobe, it cannot be for lack of space. To be sure, textbook authors rarely quote anymore. But more particularly, the herification process seems to be operating again. Douglas' words on race might make us think badly of him. So let's leave them out. Compared to Douglas, Lincoln was an idealistic, equalitarian, but in southern Illinois, arguing with Douglas. He too expressed white supremacist ideas. Hmm. Thus, at the debate in Charleston, he said, I am not, nor even have been in favor of bringing about the social and political equality of the white and black races. In parentheses, applause. That I am not ever have been in favor of making voters or jurors of Negroes. Most textbook authors protect us from a racist. Lincoln. By so doing, they diminish students' capacity to recognize racism as a force in American life. For if Lincoln could be racist, then so might the rest of us be. And if Lincoln could transcend racism, as he did on occasion, then so might the rest of us. During the Civil War, Northern Democrats countered the Republican charge that they favored rebellion by professing to be the white man's party. They protested the government's emancipation of slaves in the District of Columbia and its diplomatic recognition of Haiti. They claim Republicans had nothing except nigger on the brain. They were enraged when the U.S. Army accepted African-American recruits. And they made a race a paramount factor in their campaigns. In those days before television, parties held coordinated rallies. On the last Saturday before the election, Democratic senators might address crowds in each major city. Local office holders would hold forth in smaller towns. Each of these rallies featured music. Hundreds of thousands of songbooks were printed to the party faithful. Might sing the same songs coast to coast. A favorite in 1864, was sung to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yankee Doodle Dandy. Let me get that out for you. The new national anthem. <clears throat> and I, I'm not going to sing this. I, I'm going to read y'all the lyrics to it because, yeah, I'm doing a preview read right here and I'm just like, Mm. 
the new national anthem. And I bet you, yeah, I bet you some people are, know this right already, what's in here, what I'm about to tell you. But let me share with you real quick. We're going to go a little bit over 15 because I just done steered away from the text. But here it is, the new national anthem. It's entitled Nigger Doodle Dandy. Yankee Doodle is no more. Sunk his name and station. Nigger Doodle takes his place and favors amalgamation. The chorus. Nigger Duty. All the go. Ebony Shins and Bandy. Loyal. People all must bow. To Nigger Doodle Dandy. The white breed is under par. It lacks the richer Romy, richer Romy, one of the two, gives us something black as tar, give us all the homie, chorus, nickel doodle, all the go. Blubber lips are killing sweet, and kinky heads are splendid, and oh, it makes such bully feet to have the heels extended. Chorus, nigger doodles, all the go. And that is uh, the lyrics to the new national anthem, nigger doodle dandy. So certainly, um, you can go ahead and, and think on take number 11 that I just uh, read for you out of The Lies My Teacher Told Me by James Lowen. Stay tuned for take number 12 here on Poem Praise 2, okay? At this time, go ahead and hit the like button, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. For you'll know when I, Poem Praise 2, is coming with something new for you. I do want for you and your family to be safe, to be well, and be blessed. It be at thy will. I, Poem Praise 2, I'll talk and I'll see you later, 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 y'all. All right, till next time. See you soon.